Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. Today, of course, this evening is the 29th of November. And as I said this morning, um, in the church today, we are, we are commemorating the, the, as the day as a day of intercession and thanksgiving for the missionary work of the church. A day of intercession and thanksgiving for the missionary work of the church. And I want to pray specifically about that tonight. As we pray for everything else, if we can, but specifically about the work of the church, the missionary work of the church, as I mentioned this morning. All right, let's pray as we come to the end of this day. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of light and darkness. To you be glory and praise forever. As evening falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. May your word be a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path, that we may behold your coming among us. Strengthen us in our stumbling weakness and free our tongues to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. All right, let's do the psalm, which is Psalm 74. Psalm 74. Arise, O God, maintain your cause. O God, why have you utterly disowned us? Why does your anger burn against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation that you purchased of old, the tribe you redeemed for your, for your own possession, and Mount Zion where you dwelt. Hasten your steps towards the endless ruins where the enemy has laid waste all your sanctuary. Your adversaries roared in the place of your worship. They set up their banners as tokens of victory. Like men brandishing axes on high in a thicket of trees. All her carved work they smashed down with hatchet and hammer. They set fire to your holy place. They defiled the dwelling place of your name and raised it to the ground. They said in their heart, let us make havoc of them together. And they burned down all the sanctuaries of God in the land. There are no signs to see, not one prophet left, not one among us who knows how long. How long, O oh God, will the adversary scoff? Shall the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Why have you withheld your hand and hidden your right hand in your bosom? Yet God is my king from of old, who did deeds of salvation in the midst of the earth. It is you that divided the sea by your might and shattered the heads of the dragons on the waters. You alone crushed the heads of Leviathan and gave him to the beasts of the desert for food. You cleft the rock for fountain and food and flood and flood. You dried up 
ever flowing rivers. Yours is the day, yours also the night. You establish the moon and the sun. You set all the bounds of the earth. You fashioned both summer and winter. Remember now, Lord, how the enemy scoffed, how a foolish people despised your name. Do not give to wild beasts the soul of your turtle dove. Forget not the lives of your poor forever. Look upon your creation, for the earth is full of darkness, full of the haunts of violence. Let not the oppressed turn away ashamed but let the poor and the needy praise your name. Arise, O God, maintain your cause. Remember how fools revile you all day long. Forget not the clamor of your adversaries, the tumult of your enemies that ascends continually. Arise, O God, maintain your own cause. And the prayer, redeeming God, renew your broken people with your Holy Spirit, that they may walk your narrow way and greet your coming dawn in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. And our, our canticle this evening from, from Revelation chapter 22. Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Behold, I am coming soon, says the Lord, and bring in my reward with me to give to everyone according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who do God's commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter into the city through the gates. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you with this testimony for all the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright morning star. Come, say the spirit and the bride. Come, let each hearer reply. Come forward, you who are thirsty. Let those who desire take the water of life as a gift. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. As I read that, as I'm reading that, I'm thinking of uh, the church, the missionary work of the church. And here, the, the very end of Revelation, there is that invitation that still goes out to people. Come, you who are thirsty. Let those who desire take the water of life as a gift. Sisters and brothers, there is no reason for anyone to perish in their sins if they will simply come to Jesus. The invitation is gone out. Come, come, those who are thirsty. And of course, it requires a thirst for God. It requires a desire for God. Come, all those who are thirsty. Let those who desire take the water of life as a gift. This water of life is that living water that Jesus gives. That it's not a physical thing, clearly. It's not water that gives life. It's the water of life. That is life as your drink, life, eternal life, to quench your thirst. Uh, those who are thirsty, come. Come and receive this life-giving water. This water that comes from the rock that is Jesus Christ. 
this, sisters and brothers, is the invitation that goes out to the world, to us, to our community. And yet, there are people who are dying tonight without Jesus, without, without heeding this invitation. It's a simple invitation. Let's come to Jesus, all those who have a thirst for life eternal. For living, for living forever. All those who, who have a desire to live forever, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. All those who have a thirst to live forever, come to Jesus. And, and sisters and brothers, most of us, 99% of people on this earth have a desire to live forever. They just don't come to Jesus to find the life-giving water, the elixir of life is found in Jesus Christ. I'm preaching already and I haven't read the readings yet, but I just thought as I was reading that canticle from Revelation 22, it just dawned on me. That is the invitation. Today we are remembering and reflecting on the church as a missionary entity. God's, God's uh, mission to the world uh, and um, and that's what we proclaim. We ask people to come to Jesus, who alone can quench our thirst. All right, Isaiah chapter 26 is our reading this evening. Isaiah chapter 26 is our Old Testament reading. So let's do that from verse 1 to 13. A day is coming when the people will sing this song in the land of Judah. Our city is strong. God himself defends its walls. Open the city gates and let the faithful nation enter. The nation whose people do what is right. You, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. He will always protect us. He has humbled those who were proud. He destroyed the strong city they lived in and sent this and sent its walls crashing into the dust. Those who were oppressed walk over it now and trample it under their feet. Lord, you make the path smooth for good people. The road they travel is level. We follow your will and put our hope in you. You are all that we desire. At night I long for you with all my heart. When you judge the earth and its people, they, they will all learn what justice is. Even though you are kind to the wicked, they never learn to do what is right. Even here in the land of righteous people, they still do wrong. They refuse to recognize your greatness. Your enemies do not know that you will punish them. Lord, put them to shame and let them suffer. Let them suffer the punishment you have prepared. Show them how much you love your people. You will give us prosperity, Lord. Everything that we achieve is the result of what you do. Lord our God, we have been ruled by others, but you alone are our Lord. Amen. We stop there. That's great verse. Lord our God, we have been ruled by others, but you alone are our Lord. It's a, it's a way of saying, you know, we've had many kings, we've had many laws, but you are the supreme. You are the main the one in whom we trust. We don't trust in the rulers. We don't trust in the human rulers. We trust in you, God. And so verse 3, You, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep their purpose firm. Um, the, 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 the old version said, You will keep in perfect peace those whose mind 
is stayed on you. It's a great verse. And, and, and put their trust in you. Those who, whose mind is fixed on God, sisters and brothers, will experience perfect peace. We talk about this all the time, don't we? The sense of, of, of tranquility, knowing that God is in control of my life. God is in control of the universe. He's in frank, he's frankly, he's in control of the world. And I, I believe the, the, if we uh, Christians, if, if Christians don't have this kind of peace, it's either because we don't believe that God is in charge, or, or, you know, or we believe that somehow by worrying and by fretting and by fear, fear and anxiety, we can do something about our situation. And of course, we can't. And so what we do? What we are called to do, those you will keep in perfect peace, those who keep their mind focused on him. The, this version says those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in you. That's it. You have a strong purpose and trust in God. And then you will have perfect peace. Uh, the only reason we don't have that peace is because we don't believe that God is supreme god is in charge god is the god cares a he cares about my life he cares about me he cares about what i do and he he is he is faithful to his promises um you lord give perfect peace to those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in you trust in the lord forever he will always protect us always there's never a time that he will not look after us, sisters and brothers. He will always protect us if we trust him. We must trust him. We must put our trust in God because he alone can save us. Amen. Let's, um, actually, before, before I go to uh, the New Testament reading, which is Matthew, let's just go and read the, the, the other canticle. My soul is waiting for you, O Lord. In your word is my hope. My soul is waiting for you, O Lord. In your word is my hope. There is forgiveness with you, so that you shall be feared. In your word is my hope. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. My soul is waiting for you, O Lord. In your word is my hope. And the Matthew reading is Matthew chapter 12, from verse 22 to 37. Matthew 12, 22 to 37. Then some people brought to Jesus a man um, who was blind and could not talk because he had a demon. Jesus healed the man so that he was able to talk and see. The crowds were all amazed at what Jesus had done. Could he be the son of David? They asked. When the Pharisees heard this, they replied, He drives out demons only because their ruler, Beelzebub, gives him power to do so. Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he said to them, any country that divides itself into groups which fight each other will not last very long. And any town or family that divides itself into groups which fight each other will fall apart. So if one group is fighting another in Satan's kingdom, this means that it is already divided into groups and will soon fall apart. You say that I drive out demons because Beelzebub gives me the power to do so. Well then, who gives your followers the power to drive them out? What your own followers do proves that you are wrong. No, it is not Beelzebub, that, but God's Spirit who gives me the power to drive out demons, which proves that the kingdom of God has already come upon you. 
No one can break into a strong man's house and take away his belongings unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Anyone who is not for me is really against me. Anyone who does not help me gather is really scattering. And so I tell you that people can be forgiven any sin and any evil thing they say. But whoever says evil things against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who says something against the Son of Man can be forgiven. But whoever says something against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven now or ever. To have good fruit, you must have a healthy tree. If you have a poor tree, you will have bad fruit. A fruit is known by the kind of a tree is known by the kind of fruit it bears. You snakes, how can you say good things when you are evil? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good person brings good things out of a treasure of good things. A bad person brings bad things out of a treasure of bad things. You can be sure that on judgment day, everyone will have to give account of every useless word he has ever spoken. Your words will be used to judge you, to declare you either innocent or guilty. Let me stop there. Okay, it's a lot here. So firstly, they accuse Jesus of using satanic powers to drive out demons. And Jesus sort of turned the tables onto them and said, well, if I am, if I am doing miracles through the power of Satan, your followers who also do miracles, and that is something that Jesus admitted, that the followers of the Pharisee, or the, the Pharisees, um, I mean, somehow God still used them to do miracles. And the, the, the point is, Jesus is saying, um, you know, if, if I do it, then who, who gives your followers inspiration? And, um, and, and his point is that Satan is not going to drive out Satan. Uh, Satan's kingdom would be divided. Um, Satan is not seeking to, to destroy himself. And a divided kingdom will, be, will fall eventually because there will be factions fighting against each other. And, and so his, his point is satanic kingdom is not, is not divided. But he says, the stronger man will come and bind up the, uh, it, you need someone stronger to bind the strong man. The strong man, of course, is the devil. But Jesus is the one who is stronger than the devil. Who's come and tie? Who's always come to tie him up and plunder his kingdom, as it were? So Jesus is the one who has come to destroy the works of the devil. We are told that elsewhere, and then we are given this sin against the Holy Spirit that cannot be forgiven. And it's um, people have always puzzled over this, and I'm you know I I I don't want to get into that. All I do want to say is that. If you are worried that you have committed the sin that cannot be forgiven, it is very likely that you have not. Because the very, the very cause for concern, the very anxiety that you might, is in fact uh, 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 an e evidence that the Holy Spirit is working in your heart. And if the Holy Spirit is working in your heart, then you could not have committed the sin against the Holy Spirit. Because the sin against the Holy Spirit means that you have, you have rejected, you have turned your back on the Holy Spirit. You have, you have hardened your heart like Pharaoh so many times that you will, there is no turning back. And so your heart is as hard as a stone. But if you have compassion, if you have a desire at all, to please God, then you you have not committed that sin at all. Um, last bit, Jesus talks about the fruit and and the tree and 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 that, sisters and brothers, is a way to say that our nature needs to change. If our nature is not changed, then our actions will not be changed either. 
Um, the nature is the tree. The nature of the tree determines the type of fruit that it's going to bear. Um, the good person, the person who has a good nature, will produce good fruit. The person who has an evil nature will produce bad fruit. Um, and so we have, our nature needs to be changed. It's not the tree, on, the fruit on the trees that need to change. It's the tree itself, the root that needs to change. And only Jesus can change the heart. All right, I'll leave that there. I won't go any further with that, but that's enough for us to meditate on for tonight. All right, so let's pray. Um, our Father, we thank you for bringing us to the end of another day. We are grateful, O oh God, for your goodness and mercy to us. And Lord, we bring to you the concerns and cares in our hearts. You promise perfect peace to those who trust you, to those whose mind is fixed on you. And so, Lord, we pray that you give us that perfect peace tonight. May our heart, our minds, our, our desires be transfixed on you and, and you alone, and, and, and that we will not worry about the cares and worries of this world, but instead we will, we will trust you as our sovereign, awesome, loving Father who cares for every minute detail of our lives. And so, oh God, we pray, we, we entrust our lives into your hands and we ask that you will give us your peace so that we will not worry. Give us the grace not to worry or fret or concern ourselves about whatever it is that's going on in our lives or around us. But help us to trust you as we, as we seek your mercy and grace tonight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, we pray for the church. We pray for your church, Lord. We pray that your church may be ready for the coming of Christ, that your people everywhere will, will clothe themselves in the white linen of the righteousness of Jesus Christ and be ready to meet our Lord when he comes. Lord, we, we pray for your kingdom to come. We pray that you will come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come, come quickly. Come and save us. Come and redeem us. Come and bring your peace and justice to reign upon this earth. Lord, come. And so, Lord, we pray that your people everywhere, your church, will be ready. And when you come, you will not find us sleeping, but we will be fully awake when the, as, as the day approaches. And so, Lord, we, we entrust ourselves to you, entrust our, our church to you, as uh, small as we are, maybe feeble as we are. But, Lord, we pray that you will use our smallness and our feebleness for your glory in our community. In this place, may your name, may your name be famous in this place, O oh God. So that from this, these four walls, those of us who go out from these four walls will go out with a burning desire to proclaim the good news, to tell others about Jesus, to drop the leaflets indoors, to speak to those who are anyone who asks, those we meet along our path. Oh God. Give us your grace so that we will not shrink back from proclaiming the wonderful, the wonders of Jesus Christ, the, the, the preciousness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, give us the grace to do that this, this Christmas. And as we drop these leaflets indoors, we pray, O oh God, that everyone who receives one will 
will reflect, will come to know Jesus, will be transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we, we come and we bring ourselves to you, bring your church. We think of the leaders of the church, bishops and uh, ministers of the gospel. Lord, be with our bishops, be with our, all the leaders uh, in the church local, the church universal, so that they will lead with integrity and the power of your spirit by their example, as many of the bishops of the past. Lord, we pray for the nations of the world, that they may be subject to the rule of God, we pray for world leaders. We pray, Lord, that they will bow their knee to the great I am. And so, Lord, we pray. We pray for the leaders of the world. We pray for those who are working for justice in the world. Those who are seeking justice. Those who work for peace. Those who seek to broker peace among war and factions. Lord, we pray for them. We pray for the broken, that they may find your healing and your salvation, your deliverance, your, your wholeness. We pray for those who are sick in body or mind. Those we know, those we don't know. Lord, bring your healing touch upon them. And as we remember the people of Ukraine, we continue to ask for peace in that part of our world. That Lord, you will, you will grant the people of Ukraine mercy during this time. Give them, give them relief from the bombs, from the guns, from Putin's weapons of war. Lord, we pray for an end to that war so that those people we live in peace again. We pray for ourselves and all those that are on our hearts tonight. Give us grace, O oh Lord, that we may find our rest in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our night prayer Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.